though the most common non-ferrous metals we machine around here are aluminum and sometimes brass, jewelry metals are also often considered for CNC milling. In the next couple of videos, we'll be running some basic toolpaths in sterling silver, an alloy that's 92.5% silver with copper making up the rest. Before we begin, however, I've noted in a previous video that harder tempers of metal generally machine better. Sterling silver is no exception. Metal tempers in the jewelry world are given by designations like dead soft, half hard, full hard, and spring hard, and these have very different mechanical properties. This is how cold rolled hardened copper behaves and this is how softened annealed copper behaves. Same alloy, very different properties. Most jewelers and artisans deal with materials on the softer end of the spectrum because it can be easily formed by hand, through rollers, or under a hammer. But for CNC purposes, you'll want the hardest stuff you can get. Also, jewelry metals are expensive. Sterling silver less so than pure silver, but it still has a measurable price per gram. So collecting your shavings and chips when machining is in your best interests. I built a simple walled MDF platform on which I could machine my metal. For work holding, I'm going to use fixed ring wax because once it sets, it's not tacky. It won't gum up your end mills if you cut into it. This is important for the smaller tools we're going to be using because they're far more sensitive to sudden changes in resistance when milling. And once I've made a mess of my platform, I can just surface the work area to clean off the wax and embedded chips. With those suggestions out of the way, let's work with some strips of sterling silver. I have here an assortment of pieces ranging from dead soft to half hard in about 20 to 22 gauge thicknesses. That works out to just under a millimeter thick. Let's start out simple today and mill out a basic disc charm blank. I'll start by drawing two circles, one large one for the blank and a smaller circle for using to attach to a piece of chain or something. I'm going to use a contour toolpath on the inside of the small circle and a contour toolpath on the outside of the big circle. Since we want to minimize both waste and cutting forces, I'll choose a 132nd inch end mill to use here. 10,000 RPM, 8 inches per minute, 4th hour per step down. Could you use larger end mills to go faster and use speeds and feeds closer to those for copper or aluminum? Sure, but only to a point. I don't think that anything over a 16th of an inch or maybe 2 millimeters would be very useful here. The larger your kerf is, the more material you're losing, and the larger your end mill, the less detail you can put into your piece. I'll secure my silver to my walled MDF platform by placing a few pieces of machinable fixturing wax under my sterling silver and heating up the metal with a heat gun. If you don't put the metal on top of the wax, you'll just end up blowing the wax pieces away unless you've preheated the MDF to the point where the wax starts sticking on contact. Move the silver around a bit to squeeze out as much wax as you can. You want a thin, uniform layer underneath. I like to squash it down with a 1-2-3 block which will also draw away heat and solidify the wax quickly. When you're using fixturing wax, however, it's possible to have air bubbles or debris or unmelted globs of wax underneath your part. If that happens, you may not be able to get your stock perfectly flat. If it's not within a thou or two of being dead level, then you might find yourself breaking tools when an end mill hits a high spot. You can get around this by either facing your stock down with a larger end mill so you know that the top surface is level, or you can start your cut just a little bit high. Wasting a minute or two watching the machine cutting air for the first step down is a small price to pay to avoid breaking tools. Once this blank was cut out, I decided I wanted to run an engraving toolpath on it. This is an Eagle SVG that I found on the internet and I'm going to run a contour toolpath on it with no offset. Using our 501 PCB engraver, 10,000 RPM, 8 inches per minute, 0.003 inch step down. As you can see, we traced out the Eagle with this toolpath. But this engraving isn't very clean, there are small shavings still hanging onto the cut walls, and that's because this is dead soft sterling silver. The engraver can't produce chips that break off cleanly. The silver, at a microscopic level, is acting somewhat like clay. The piece that I cut out can be polished up by hand, but unless you chase all the lines with a hand engraving tool or something, the lines will likely never be perfectly clean. Even though you can technically machine silver in most states of temper, harder is almost always better. This is the exact same toolpath run on some half-hard silver, producing much nicer results. So choose your stock carefully. I hope you found this little introductory project helpful. The goal was more to introduce you to some work holding and setup ideas for the CNC than anything else. Next time, we'll step up the complexity just a little bit more. Until then, good luck and have fun machining, folks.